welcome to another episode of Deeply Connected. And before we get to the interview, I just want to say that the person sitting next to me on the couch today, hmm, I feel very <laughs> deeply connected right now to myself and I'm becoming very emotional right now. I'll take a breath. That's what I tell people when we get all emotional, I'll take a breath mm. Mm, and just connect to that. <sighs> so it's all happy emotions and happy tears because who I will introduce you to is someone who I met um, not so long time ago, <laughs> not so long time ago. And she made such an impression on me, just her energy of who she is and how she carries herself and just everything that she embodies in her being when you are around her made me feel so inspired. And in that moment, as I witnessed her on the stage speaking, I felt I need to figure out how to carry so much grace mm. in my being. And the way she carries herself as she shares her wisdom through her words and her heart, um, has been a continuous reminder of my next, my next version of myself. That's some parts of that I aspire to be. And so I welcome today Sierra Range. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> that was such a beautiful intro. Mm -hmm. I'm so gracious to be able to sit on your couch and engage in a conversation yeah. with you. You are someone who I admire. Mm. And you do carry such a light and just a will to help others heal so they can thrive. And I, and I value that. And so it's an honor to be able to share this moment with you. Mm. We both received that. <laughs> <laughs> we can laugh. We both received that. Yes. Oh, so um, I met you when I saw you on a stage. Mm. You, you were already such an expert in your field of expertise and you were mm. achieving all your goals and... The way you carried yourself was so, um, I don't think it's even impressive. It's just inspirational. Mm. It's just so much grace. And so if you could share mm, how you chose to become that woman, first of all, because mm -hmm. I think it was very intentional mm -hmm. to become who you are. Mm -hmm. um, and just give a glimpse of an insight, maybe what it took to, be, to become you mm. before we go even to our marriages and Ooh, mm -hmm. that's such a loaded question because the, at the core of that is being able to assess identity mm -hmm. who do I see myself as who am I and then you said something that really resonated who do you choose to be mm -hmm. right and so when I wake up I choose to be kind I choose to operate in integrity I choose to have upstanding character and I choose to leap with love because I understand how necessary it is mm -hmm. just for humans to thrive. I try to be the person who I would want in my life. I try to be the person who I myself have always have always needed. And so in making that choice, it's also choosing to overcome lots and lots mm -hmm. of obstacles and opposition. It's mm -hmm. choosing to continue to do the work necessary mm -hmm. to elevate into the highest version of myself. Like many people, I face challenges, heartbreak, frustration. You know, I have my days when I struggle to get out of bed and mm -hmm. I'm annoyed with my children and mm -hmm. I want to drop kick my husband. <laughs> but at the end of every day, I choose to lead with love. Um, and I think that we all have the capacity to do that. But there are these things like triggers that get in the mm -hmm. way or wounds mm -hmm. that get in the way or a lack of self-awareness mm -hmm. or a faulty belief system. Um, one thing I've noticed when I look back over my life is the thing that has allowed me to truly elevate is the, is my vision, my vision for myself, my vision for my future. You know, I grew up in a very low socioeconomic environment. Um, I come from a family where there are drugs present and mental illness present and lots of poverty. That was a part of my environment. But although I was in it, Mm -hmm. I could never become, allow it, I could never become a part of it yeah. because I had a vision outside of it that allowed me to act in a way that aligned with where I wanted to go in my life and not so much where I was. And so we survived the season that we're in in order to get to that next season or that next level where we can then thrive. 
Because surviving alone is not enough. No. Surviving it's, it's not enough. You survive, mm -hmm. but are you still intact? And so yes. that's where that transition from survival or merely surviving mm -hmm. to thriving is so pivotal because surviving only allows you to master the moment. Thriving mm -hmm. allows you to truly embrace it and be present in it. And so I've, I've, I carry this awareness with me in all of every conflict, every obstacle, every setback, every disappointment, grief, and all the other things mm -hmm. that accompany the human experience. Because I'm like we're all having a human experience, mm -hmm. but we can still operate at a level of awareness and consciousness that allows us to become a light to those around us. Yes. I, as you are speaking, I'm thinking because I came from survival too, mm -hmm. different type of survival, but I, it's something you carry with you. I think you said I had a vision and I didn't allow my circumstances mm. to become parts of me. And I didn't have that. I had it to some extent. Mm -hmm. uh, when I look at myself, to some extent, I was able to cope with it. It's a personal journey, mm -hmm. but I appreciate that you were so clear on that. See, the it's thing too, though, is I can't necessarily say that I was very clear about who I wanted okay. to be. I would say it, it was clear to me that there was something more. So that was also with me. So yeah. yes, okay. It's like there's there's something more. Like mm -hmm. this isn't it. There's something more, mm -hmm. and just having that that inner hunger for something more continued to compel me to mm -hmm. show up. And as I show up, it's like your steps become illuminated as you take a step. Mm -hmm. So the future is, it's unknown. We can have an idea, we can have a dream, but we don't know what's ahead. Mm -hmm. It takes courage to actually take that step and then and the path becomes illuminated as we progress along the path. So a lot of times I went into situations not knowing. I had no mm -hmm. idea I would be a celebrity ghostwriter or managing um, highly successful CEOs or mm -hmm. managing brands or any of that. You know, I started out as a juvenile detention officer. Mm -hmm. I just continued to take another step and my steps have just led me here. So it's a series of decisions that I believe have been the driving force in my destiny. Um, and I think that 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 willingness to mm -hmm. take a step in not knowing when all you know is that there's more. You don't know more of what. You don't yeah. know what more looks like. You don't know what more feels like. Mm -hmm. You don't know what more is going to be. You just know there's more. And you get to a place where where you are is just no longer satisfying. Mm -hmm. It almost feels as if you've outgrown your current level and you can't stay. Mm -hmm. And then there's a pain and there's a grief that comes along with that, like transition, whether it's good or bad, you know, change is disruptive. Yes. And so learning how to manage and adjust to those changes while still embracing the possibilities of the future, mm -hmm. even if you're not quite sure what it is, what it is. it's having that faith perspective mm -hmm. and the courage to keep going Mm -hmm. even if you don't really know what you're going into. It requires a lot of trust. Lots of trust. A lot of trust in yourself, but also in the higher power, mm. whatever that is for mm -hmm. each individual, and just trusting without yet seeing it mm. coming to fruition. And, that's it. Right? That's, that's what it is. That's and it. I didn't realize that. I knew, mm. like, now I'm so clear about that, just that. But when I left my country at 19, mm. I had no idea that I will never go back. I was supposed to leave for a year. And be one year in Belgium that turned to 15. Wow. Where I met my husband. Wow. <laughs> He's from America. <laughs> and I remember telling my friends in college, because I had no idea about really American life. Mm -hmm. All we see is TV and some of it is not very positive. And I always thought, I would never move to America. <laughs> Who wants to live there? And here we are with my American husband. And so, mm -hmm. but I knew, I didn't know how it will look like, but I felt this cannot be here. I felt so caged and confined by the culture and the mm -hmm. expectations of society and how we needed to mm -hmm. survive. Mm -hmm. It was pure survival in Eastern Europe and it still is in many ways. And mm -hmm. I love my culture and I felt like there has to be, I, I didn't know what, I didn't know what exactly it will look like. But I remember at some point it was very hard for me. I, I finished college and I couldn't find a job. And even before that, my mom would ask, why don't you come home? Mm. And it was such a clear just knowing that mm. I'm not going back. I yes. am not. I 
have not, and I didn't know what I was trying to achieve yet, but I did not achieve yet mm. enough to go back. That was my fault. Mm -hmm. And so I just kept going. Even it was like, I remember there were months when I was studying and I didn't have enough money for food. Mm. And it's, you know, now I can laugh with my friends, but we would eat rice or mm. there was no rice at some point. Yeah. And I wouldn't even tell my mom because I didn't want to worry her. Yeah. But I was so clear, even though it can be hard and lonely and I don't have any family around and it's different culture and language, yeah. I am not going back. Mm -hmm. Is this trust? I don't know at that point what it was. I'm so much more clear right now yeah. from my own evolution, but just this feeling like... I'm not ready yet to go back and I don't mm. know if I ever will and mm. just keep going and keep going. So what did you have to really, and you touched on it before, but what did you have to let go of mm. and how hard is it to always be the person that mm. chooses her higher self? Ooh. And that's so good. Yeah. That's so good. I just want to say, even before I answer that, like your evolution, it, it's just so beautiful. Mm. So from, from there to where you are now, a series of trusting mm -hmm. and then choosing to make the next best decision. Mm -hmm. Like, what is the next best decision that I can make in this moment? No matter how chaotic it feels, yeah. how broken you may feel mm -hmm. on the inside, what's the next best mm -hmm. thing that I can do? What's the next best action that I can take? And I would say for me, it was definitely that. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that I've had to let go in mm -hmm. order to, you know, allow this higher version of myself to exist I had to let go of the little me. And mm -hmm. it was a very, very painful process because I didn't realize how much pain little me had been carrying. Mm -hmm. And this happened um, literally the night after my husband and I, we celebrated our 50th anniversary. And we had this beautiful ceremony. It was my, uh, my sister and her husband, my brother and his wife, and my dad and his wife. And we were all um, celebrating our anniversaries because they all run around the same time. Beautiful experience. Um, but the day after, I could not stop crying. Mm. And I walked to the beach and I just cried and cried and cried. And what I realized is that the part of me, the little me, mm -hmm. I had to let her go mm -hmm. because I, I, I was in a place where I just wanted to love my husband on a deeper level. I wanted to love myself. I wanted to embrace love without limits. I wanted to be able to love and nurture my children without restriction. And in order to do that, I had to first identify what I felt like was getting in the way of mm -hmm. that. And for me, it was the version of me who didn't receive the love that I deserved as a kid. The, the, the mm -hmm. version of me that wasn't properly nurtured, mm -hmm. the version of me that was exposed to all different types of things. And while that version of me allowed me to be super strong and super resilient mm -hmm. and to really overcome a lot of hard things in my life, now that I was no longer in this survival mode, mm -hmm. she was no longer effective for my growth. Yeah. You know, that version of me was effective when I was struggling and I was mm -hmm. managing chaos and I was trying to make it to the next level. But once I reached this level where I found peace and mm -hmm. happiness and joy, I had to reset how I approached that version of my life mm -hmm. because now just willing my way and pushing my way through it was no longer necessary. My mm -hmm. life had become soft and my heart needed to be able to match that. Mm. And so I had to let go of the version of myself that had a hard time receiving love. Mm -hmm. And for someone who gives it so easily, yeah. it was I had to learn how to receive it because I was really great at giving it. But to be on the receiving end of it felt so foreign mm -hmm. because it wasn't always there. Yeah. And so I had to let that version of me go. And what that looked like was, again, just learning to receive love, being open and vulnerable mm -hmm. and not always having to be strong or right or perfect, right. like give myself mm -hmm. permission to be broken and to allow the people around me to see that version of me so they can sometimes come to my rescue. It was about realizing that I didn't always have to save myself. And mm -hmm. it's really hard to do that, to be your own hero when you're in a marriage, when you're supposed to be vulnerable. And a lot of times... Women do that as a coping mechanism or a defense mechanism if the marriage isn't healthy and it's like, I need to protect myself. Mm -hmm. But in true loving and healthy relationships, that becomes problematic. Yes, it does. Because if we're engaging together and we're a team, I need you to love us more than you love yourself. Or I need you to nurture us more than you're nurturing your childhood wounds. Your protection and, mechanism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that was a transition. It was... 
identifying and allowing a healed version of me to emerge and not just my marriage, but in the way I did business, mm-hmm. the way I engaged in my relationships, the way I communicated in my relationships and the way I advocated for myself, mm-hmm. you know? And so in doing that, it was painful because it's like all your life, you only know how to be who you are. Yes. So what happens when who you are is no longer aligning with who you're trying to mm-hmm. become? And so it's almost like you're at this crossroad. Who do I have to be in order to live this version of my life? Yeah. And I realized I needed to be extremely emotionally well. Mm-hmm. And I needed to allow myself to receive the love that I so graciously mm-hmm. give to others. And I also had to learn that it was okay to not always be in chaos. And I had to learn how to operate without chaos. About chaos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you know how some people, they just operate very well under pressure? Yes. That's me. Mm-hmm. So what happens when there when there's no pressure? It's like you almost kind of subconsciously create it Correct. because it's what you use as fuel to thrive. Yes. And so when I'm changing my programming mm-hmm. and I'm going from surviving to thriving, mm-hmm. I need a whole new operating system. It's mm-hmm. like an Android yes. user now getting an iPhone. Yes. It's like it's just different. It is, <laughs> and it feels different. so different for your nervous system and your mm-hmm. brain because, as you say, if you create space and there's nothing to do, let's say no chaos. And there you are, you being yourself. And what what do I do? And how do I deal with everything that is showing up and presenting itself when right. you just want to respond to or react to things in your life instead of being proactive? And I can relate so much to that. Um, so much to, first of all, learning how to be in a marriage and be open and mm. be um, able to receive and soften and so and I remember in the beginning with my husband and you know him so um he would say something like I love when you are soft or Mm -hmm. can can you speak and I used to get sometimes annoyed with him you know like (laughs) what do you mean this is me this is me and I was just the you know tough um tough girl from eastern Europe that you know (laughs) did her thing and I'm like I'm still soft I'm still soft and I was like let me be just curious about this Mm -hmm. what does that even mean and um it's such an interesting as you say transition and change Mm -hmm. is hard because it's almost like when I started to become soft and and it was after I saw you I like I understood the, the softer the feminine I understood that but I still didn't feel how it could feel for me. Mm-hmm. In some ways I was very nurturing and in some ways I was soft, but I was still very tough. I was still very, mm-hmm. you cross me, it's a problem. <laughs> you know, we are not going to talk about this. Something's going to happen. Um, and, and it served me very well in my survival. You know, mm-hmm. being in a foreign country for 15 years, it mm-hmm. served me very well because mm-hmm. it was very foreign to me to be in a different, cu- in a different culture. And mm-hmm. also I want to touch later on money, but coming from Eastern Europe where it's just survival financially for me and for a lot of people I knew. And now I'm in Western Europe where there is such an abundance of wealth and Mm. I'm trying to figure out who am I here. And Mm. and when I was working there at some point, I felt, wow, people have nice lives, but that's not for me because it's for Mm. those people. I'm just from Eastern Europe here and I'm trying to survive here. And um, but coming back, so I had to be tough and coming back to softness in my marriage, as you shared for yourself, mm-hmm. after I saw you, uh, something happened for me and I was like, I just need to be curious what that even means. And with the change for me, what is interesting was asking me when I'm changing and I'm choosing to be softer, am I changing because I want to, or am I changing mm-hmm. because I think it's right? That's good. Is it because my husband asked me mm-hmm. or is it because... I think it's the right thing to do. Is it something that I truly want? Mm -hmm. And um, just really navigating and being with that question without immediate response. And even now, sometimes when I think being on the podcast or or speaking to my clients is really this, this, this question of how do I want to be in that space? Do Mm -hmm. I want to be soft? Do I want to be tough? Do I like, who am I still as I'm evolving? And, Mm -hmm. um, is not always a very straightforward answer Mm -hmm. because I want to make sure, and I think you are the same too, if we do embark on this change and evolution that is intentional Mm -hmm. and it's not just something that it sounds great Mm -hmm. at the moment Mm -hmm. when it presents itself. So how was it for you um, and for your husband as you started in a marriage? Mm -hmm. I think you got married very 
early mm-hmm. in your life. And then how long have you been together now? Since we were 17. We were high school yeah. sweethearts. And you are 18, so it's like one year. <laughs> <laughs> She looks amazing. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but everyone. so, yes, yeah, so you've been together for some time. Mm-hmm. So how was that for him to see you and first being with you when you are still, I suppose, in survival a lot in many ways, even yeah. though thriving here, but here in survival, and then seeing you change in front of his eyes and choosing mm. to be a different type of a woman with him? That's such a great question. And uh, it makes me a little emotional because my husband, the thing that made me fall in love with him, mm-hmm. because he was someone who saw me at a time when I felt like no one else saw me. Mm. Like, I was always gifted. I was in a gifted program. But once I got to uh, high school, Mm -hmm. looking back, I realized now that was the first time that I really experienced depression. Mm. And I had no idea. I I didn't have the language. I didn't have the understanding Mm -hmm. for it at that time. But as I look back, I realized I just stopped going to school. And Uh I stopped going to practice. I just had kind of, like, slowly given up on things that I loved. Mm -hmm. And so it just so happened I got kicked out of the high school that I was in at the time. And so I had to go... Um, to another high school, and he happened to be the star football player there. Mm. On the first day of school, I'm walking in. I'm upset. I don't want to go to this school. Like I want to go and be with my friends. It's my senior year. The positive energy. It, it was. It wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> it was not there. And so I'm walking, and he goes, "Oh my gosh, he's this high school jock yeah. at the time." He goes, "You're so skinny, but I can get you thick." And I'm like, <laughs> "Excuse me." And so I start going off on him. And I make my way to my homeroom class. And I get to homeroom, and this guy is sitting right next to me oh, in homeroom. Really? <laughs> yes, and he had the nerve to ask for my phone number later. And so when he called me, he sat on the phone literally all night until it was time to go to school wow. the next morning. And um, like I said, he was a star football player. Mm-hmm. I became a cheerleader. I was a um, cheer mm-hmm. captain. And it was this whole, like, fairy tale thing. And people... Yeah. I believe people thought like, oh, it's just a football yeah. player and Chile yes. type thing. But we had an incredible bond. We had both come, come from hard things. And we bonded over the idea that we saw something great within one another. Mm-hmm. And we made a commitment to nurture yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Um, he's someone who saw me and said, you know, you're not like the rest of these girls. There's something different about you. And yeah. he's always, always, always nurtured that within me. Mm-hmm. And he's always reminded me of that. And so it's so funny when I go out into the world and other people are realizing, mm-hmm. and he's like, this is what I saw the very first time that I, I, I met you. And he says, it's not so much the first time I saw you, but the first time I spoke to you. Mm-hmm. Like we literally stayed on the phone until it was time to go to school the next mm-hmm. morning. And we've been connected and in love and together ever since. So for him, I think it's more so, I think it's more of my own mm-hmm. awareness Because if you ask my husband that same question, he'll say, I always knew. I always knew. It's mm, beautiful for beautiful. him to see me start to embrace it mm. and understand it and step into it. Stop fighting it. Yeah, stop fighting mm. it. But with that, um, just to answer your question, on a deeper level yeah. in relationships, we don't always grow at the same uh, yes. pace. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so giving one another just that that grace and the space to grow mm-hmm. and evolve has been one of the things that has really helped our marriage. You know, we fell in love when we were 17. Mm. We're 34 and 35 now, three kids. I've changed so much. Mm-hmm. He's changed so much. Our values have changed. Mm-hmm. Um, our interests have changed. And sometimes we don't even share yeah. the same interests. We just share a commitment. We share a bond. Mm-hmm. And we share a value system. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing that kind of nurtures our relationship yeah. as we grow. And with that requires a, a certain level of trust. Mm-hmm. I trust you to be who you are without feeling as if it's going to take away from who I am in your yes. world. Mm-hmm. You know, I trust you and I love you enough to not feel the need to possess you, mm-hmm. but to be grateful that I get to experience you. Mm-hmm. And that comes with a level of emotional maturity that I think is lacking yeah. in today's relationships because love seems so possessive and it can be super toxic. But true love is seeing someone and saying, I want to see you at your best. Like I care about how you're feeling. I care about how life is treating mm-hmm. you. I care about your inner world and I want you to be at your best. What can I do to add to that? Yes. I, I, I couldn't agree more when you say values and commitment. Mm-hmm. Commitment. And really the deeper meaning behind that word. Not even that word, but mm-hmm. what it really truly means mm-hmm. in everyday experience. Mm-hmm. Commitment when, when you are not at your best and you say, mm-hmm. like, sometimes I could feel depressed. I went through postpartum and my husband was still there. And it's 
commitment to not only the great and beautiful yes. and the highs, but commitment to when it looks ugly sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because as you say, the longer you stay married, you go through transitions mm -hmm. and you transition and you grow in different. Oh, that's so good. Hmm? That's so good. That's so, right. And it's like looking at your partner when they are not their best or sometimes mm. at their lowest and still feeling the commitment. Mm. Like I'm still here. Of course, if it's not toxic, mm -hmm. I'm still here and I'm not going anywhere. And if you need me, I'm here mm. instead of mm, that doesn't feel good. This is not who I yeah. married. This is not you at your best. And you need to do something yeah. with this in the way of almost like love is conditional. Commitment mm. is conditional mm. and it can change when you are not at your best. Wow. That part. That's so good. And I think on the other end of that the person who's having this yes. emotional chaos at the time. Yeah. And I think for me it was, and my husband has been so good at this, but just affirming in me that even when you're not at your best, mm -hmm. you're still deserving of love. Yes. You still deserve to be loved. Yes. And I think that really helps me to take my guard down mm -hmm. and just be authentic in my feelings yeah. for that day. Yeah. Like today I may feel frustrated or I didn't mm -hmm. reach my goal. Today I feel tired, I feel mm -hmm. drained, and I still have to get up because you know, this one has dance yeah. practice. This one has karate. <laughs> this one needs her hair detangled, you know, oh, and it's yes. like, and I still have to show up in my yes. life. And sometimes it feels heavy when you're managing your own emotions and still having to show and be mom. Oh my goodness, you yes. Know? And so just having that awareness that even when you're not at your best, you deserve to be loved, you know, and mm -hmm. understanding that rest is a gift that you give yourself mm -hmm. and rest is a part of productivity. Yes. And also... And this is the thing that really mm -hmm. helped me to like have a breakthrough mm -hmm. emotionally was realizing that my value does not have to be mm -hmm. tied to my productivity. 100%. You know, my value mm -hmm. is not based on my gift. Although mm -hmm. my gift is valuable, yes. that's not the sole equity of who I am as a person. Yes. And so realizing that it really helped me to just be authentic in my emotions, even the ones that didn't feel good. So important mm -hmm. because I think we, I think we have this perception of what intimacy and relationship mm -hmm. should be. And so much of intimacy comes from acknowledging mm -hmm. your, I would not say negative because there are not negative <laughs> feelings. It's the feelings that are not as, um, let's say light or, mm -hmm. you know, joyful, right? Mm -hmm. The anger, the the grief, the depression, the hopelessness sometimes. And mm -hmm. as you say, when we are with our partners or our children, and even if everything is going great for us, but mm -hmm. we have a day or a moment or a mm -hmm. season where it's heavy, being okay that we still love our kids, we still love our partners and we are valuable. And mm -hmm. I don't have to enjoy every moment of being here. Yeah. Like I can just be here as your mother and yeah. I have nothing right now. I can, yeah. I have my presence and my love, but besides that, that's mm. like today yeah. I'm feeling low yeah. and not beating on myself. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's okay. It's okay if today I take you to our activities, not with like, I'm so excited <laughs> about this. I'm just taking you because I love you and right. I'm present. But man, today feels just, ugh, I just. But that's the key, yeah. the presence. And mm. uh, the breakthrough for me came when I realized that I could just show up in my relationships. Yeah. I didn't have to perform in them. Yes. I can mm -hmm. be authentic and just bring my whole self to my relationships. Yeah. I have to perform. Mm -hmm. Like today, you're not getting all the sauce. Like today, that's all I got. <laughs> Baseball cap and let's go. It's still sauce. It just yeah. tastes different. It's just, you know, it's yeah, just a different <laughs> flavor. Listen, it is a different, it's still the sauce. It's still you. It's right. still. It's, and it's authentically me. Yes. You know, but, it's, and I think that takes a lot of pressure off mm -hmm. when you can rest in that. But I think it takes a healthy relationship yes. to provide that certain, that safe environment where you can really just be authentic mm -hmm. in who you are. And yeah. that's why I think nurturing the right relationships is so important because relationships truly fuel us. Like our communities, yes. the people we're connected to truly fuel us. And, it, and we have to have this sense of awareness where we understand the things that we're connected to that are inspiring us and charging us mm -hmm. and the things that we're connected to that are draining us. Draining us. Yeah. And as you say that, because I was just thinking, like, so as you say that, I thought that's exactly it. Because even coming back to the moment I met you mm -hmm. and as you're sitting here right now next to me, when she says, 
The relationships in your life will elevate you and will make you better and will ask of you to become somebody mm. you want to, but you are afraid of. When I met you and you're sitting next to me, the way I even speak and try to speak right now and think what I want to say is already demanding more of me mm. because I'm in your presence. Wow. That part. So this is so clear for me. And, and that's what I say when I met you, it made such a shift and my husband does it for me too. And sometimes when we are in our marriages, we can take some things for granted or not see it as clearly because we are so familiar with that. Mm -hmm. And then we see it in another person in a different light and right and in a different situation or moment. And maybe we are more open to it or we are just ready for it. And just being with you here right now and being mm -hmm. with you then, it was this question of like, how do I speak? How do I express myself? Mm -hmm. How can I elevate? Even if it's so uncomfortable, because English is my like second, third, fourth language. I don't even know. But the way you present yourself in a way you speak with your words and words carry so much. Mm -hmm. They can carry pain. They can yeah. uh, carry empowerment. They can carry love or they can carry hurt. Mm -hmm. And so how you really choose to speak, how you choose to choose your words mm -hmm. and the tone of your voice and the mm -hmm. energy you speak it with. And so I want you to understand that people in your life will elevate you or will bring you down. Mm -hmm. And as scary as it might feel, because I could have been intimidated because she's so successful when I met, when I met you, you so mm -hmm. successful. And I could have felt parts of me that could be intimidated. And I also felt parts of me that were yearning to understand who, how, how can I become a person that others look up to even more? And how can I be looking up more to myself mm -hmm. in ways that I admire about myself? And um, how can I grow? And I encourage you to check in your own life, mm -hmm. who are those people around you? And are there people that might, you know, you might be around and feel like, mm, I'm not there yet, but you aspire to be mm -hmm. in some way that, mm -hmm. and, and just step and lean into it because Every time I do that, as you say, like every time as you show up as yourself and you show parts of yourself that are more vulnerable, um, the right people will come to you mm -hmm. and the people that are not for you will give you an answer and you will just take it and you have to process mm -hmm. as it goes. Mm -hmm. But you have so much more opportunity to connect with people that are meant for you and yeah. meant to show you who you can become mm -hmm. more of. And the conversation we had at the end of, of Jessica's event, um, that's our great podcast producer. <laughs> uh, I went on stage and we were talking and I don't know how we even came to conversation about money. Mm -hmm. And we talked about how, you know, you as a woman, it's great to make your own money, mm -hmm. even in a best relationships, because mm -hmm. it's so empowering for us. And we yeah. have gifts that, mm -hmm. you know, we can, we can be paid for. Right. And, I was talking to you and I felt, wow, that's amazing. But that sounds so far away in so many ways, not making the money, but just how you worded it. And I was like, wow, I need to think about this. And then I came home and I messaged you and the way you responded, I literally sat on the couch and I cried. <laughs> it's like, how can somebody make me cry for a message? And it was about money, but it was about trust. And it was about the next. And, and every time I'm around you, you say that, don't say that. You are not a person that will speak like this. Like I said something during the event. It's like, you know, we don't think like that. Mm -hmm. You are already there. Like you're already on the first class in this mm -hmm. hotel with these people. It's not, they are not different than you. Mm -hmm. You are not different than them. Mm -hmm. Like don't even think in terms like that. Mm -hmm. I remember that. And when I received your message, I felt like, oh my gosh. Like, as you say, somebody can see something in you mm -hmm. that you know it's there, but you have trouble seeing mm -hmm. and just... You saying that or your husband saying that to you over and yes. over and over again is just like finally you're like, okay, I'm here mm -hmm. and I'm ready and let's go. Yeah. And like, I'm embracing this. But you know what I learned? This is, this is yeah. so good. Yeah. Relationships are mirrors. Yes. Whether they are good or bad, they yes. mirror who mm -hmm. you are. Yes. They, are, they mm -hmm. mirror what's happening in your yes. internal world. Mm -hmm. And so when you come into a place and you see yourself in someone and you're super inspired, yeah. it's just a mirror showing mm -hmm. you what you need to see in yourself, yeah. but because your focus is outward, you can't yes. see within. Yes. But because we are relating, mm -hmm. now it can become a mirror for you because mm -hmm. if whatever you can't see within yourself, yeah. like sometimes there's that saying, 
when it says you can't see the full picture because you're in the frame. Yes. But someone who's stepping outside mm-hmm. of that can see you in ways that you can't see yourself. Yeah. And that's why relationships are so important. Mm-hmm. Even when you're in a bad relationship, that is also mirroring your shadows. 100%. You know, it's mirroring the things mm-hmm. that you need to work on. And so you'll know when you're in the right room and you're in the right environment when what you're seeing in terms of the relationships and the connections mm-hmm. around you match who you desire to become. Yeah. They inspire you. And that's why it's so important to be around and to get out of your comfort mm-hmm. zone and to connect. But I do want to affirm you because mm-hmm. you are glowing. And I'm just so, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you for believing in yourself and not just believing, but for taking the inspired action mm-hmm. necessary to become the version of mm-hmm. you that you saw in me. Mm-hmm. I'm just a girl out here being authentic <laughs> and, you know, trying mm-hmm. to light up rooms that I walk in and not even intentionally that's not my intention when I walk into places I'm just being me Mm -hmm. and I'm in search of the next version of me Mm -hmm. and sometimes I see it in the people I connect with on Mm -hmm. stage or on the couch and having Mm -hmm. podcasts but it's about being deeply connected Mm -hmm. and when we're deeply connected we're able to see versions of ourselves that are not at the surface you got to get deeply connected to understand how pain makes you show up in your mm-hmm. relationships. You have to be deeply connected to be vulnerable enough to really be authentic. And I think it, it it's the only way to truly be authentic mm-hmm. is if you're deeply connected and you feel safe enough to show up and be your best self. And when that's no longer the case, that's when you know it's time to adjust and it's mm-hmm. time to shift to find an environment that allows you to thrive and be yourself. So I'm mm-hmm. so proud of you mm-hmm. for finding this environment or for cultivating mm-hmm. Because this is what you create, this is what you manifest mm-hmm. it with your thoughts, your intentions, your actions, and your decisions for cultivating a place that allows mm-hmm. you to light up rooms that you walk in. And there are going to be so many women that you're going to touch in the same way that you look at me and say, mm-hmm. I saw something in her yeah. that inspired me to be better. Mm-hmm. You're going to do that for so many mm-hmm. people. And that's why light attracts light. That's why it's so important when you see a light to properly nurture that light. Mm-hmm. Because there are people who don't know how to truly handle handle Mm -hmm. they can't handle that and they end up bleeding on the people and hurting the people who've been sent to help them yeah you know and that's why again relationships are so critical and in order to have a healthy relationship with anybody else Mm -hmm. you have to first have a very healthy inner relationship with yourself Mm -hmm. when you're healed you attract abundance Mm -hmm. even when you're broken you may attract it but you'll Sabotage it, Sabotage you are it. it, or not even see it. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you may have a desire for it that allows you to yeah. pursue it. Mm-hmm. So you're going after it, but your behavior is so detrimental yeah. that even when you get it, you're so toxic that you're rejecting the very thing that you wanted yes. in the first place. Mm-hmm. And so being healthy is not about just having good desires for yourself, yeah. but having the actions, the intent, mm-hmm. and the belief system that allows you to really maintain it. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the things that really forced me to be better within myself because. I love my husband and I love mm-hmm. my children. And I realized that my values weren't so much in how much money I was making. Mm-hmm. I wanted to have harmony at home. Harmony. I wanted mm-hmm. to have harmony. That's what that's what I value most. Yeah. I love, like last night I'm laying in bed. Mm-hmm. I'm in my PJs. Me and mm-hmm. my youngest daughter dream. Yeah. She's laying on my chest and we're yeah. eating Cheerios. <laughs> and my husband's helping my middle daughter with yeah. her homework. And we were just sitting there watching them do homework. Yeah. Like, I'm glad I ain't got to do no division. <laughs> Thank God I'm over this. I know. <laughs> but I that that fuels me. I love that. Oh gosh. I connect so much with that. Mm. I connect so much with that because I feel when I see growth and, and change, I do it from a place of not scarcity and mm-hmm. not this rush and urgency because what you just described what you just described it, how it feels in my household and my mm-hmm. home. Like both of us, we want harmony yeah. and we want to, when there is something is off, then mm-hmm. we need to check in with ourselves. Is yes. One of us is not taking good care of the sleep or mm-hmm. exercise or time alone or whatever that needs to happen for us. So we can, again, realign. We, yeah. Because like four people in our house, you have five, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, correct. So it's just this, I don't think I knew until I was 32, maybe how much I craved Mm. harmony and balance not balance what people think of but yeah. just this internal like I feel so grateful I look at my kids I look at my husband I'm like oh my gosh like we have such a great life mm-hmm. like the money yes I'm working towards creating more wealth but I'm creating with with also relationship and love wealth mm-hmm. I already have that and I'm working towards maintaining that and mm-hmm. not at the expense of 
mm-hmm. my my wealth in in love and relationships Absolutely. and it's such a different space to operate from because no matter what is out there and I can and yes I want to achieve more and yes I want to create more opportunities impact and also work from for mm-hmm. our family it's just this core foundation mm-hmm. in our souls in my heart and and within our family unit like I think it feels for you it's just so so amazing like mm-hmm. I look around like I didn't know in my 20s that this will be my life like mm-hmm. I will have a healthy marriage and I will have amazing boys and I will be mothering from a place of oh my goodness so much mm-hmm. just peace yeah um yes there is some triggers sometimes and sometimes you know you can feel activated with kids but I'm in such an amazing place mm-hmm. um and just knowing that and noticing that mm-hmm. and feeling that mm-hmm. and taking it in yes it's like you can't pay money for this it's there's the no world. price on there's this there's no price on it and you know what I started to reassess what I consider mm-hmm. wealth because I work with a lot of highly successful mm-hmm. people and I've been around wealth that you yes. know I never thought I would ever you know mm-hmm. be able to you know be in proximity of yes. And I've been able to earn more money than I ever thought I would. Mm-hmm. And what I'm realizing about wealth mm-hmm. is that it's not always the material things. Mm-hmm. And we hear that a lot and it sounds so cliche, but yeah. I think it takes to be in these spaces that you believe you're going to be happy. Yeah. If I'm in a Rolls Royce, I'm in a mansion, mm-hmm. my life is going to be perfect. Until you meet people who have those exact things and there's no perfection in sight. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes there's no peace. No peace. And so you start to reassess, like, what is it that I value? Because mm-hmm. wealth is in whatever you value. Correct. So if you value material things and you're, you won't feel wealthy until you mm-hmm. get it. But if you value harmony in your life and you, mm-hmm. you value love and you value safety, then when you receive those things, you're going to yes. you're gonna assess those here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll yes. be, I don't have to be in a mansion mm-hmm. as long as I'm in a home mm-hmm. with my husband and my children, mm-hmm. you know. That's more. That means more to me than anything. Yes. Just being there and everyone's mm-hmm. laughing, and everyone's being silly and goofy, mm-hmm. and we're just we're just doing our thing. Like to see all of our personalities come together, yeah. <laughs> and the way our personalities emerge, and mm-hmm. to see the girls getting into their little fights, yeah. and the way the girls engage with their mm-hmm. dad. I love that, yeah. and I didn't I didn't experience that as a kid. Me neither. So. I didn't. So I love that, yes. and it, it means so much to me, to, more than anything. And. All the time I get people pitching me for opportunities. And I used to be one of those people like, yes, yes, let's yeah. do it. It's going to be big. Yeah. This is the one. Yeah. I'm going to make so much money. And I would mm-hmm. achieve it and I would still feel empty. Mm-hmm. Like, this isn't it. Like, uh, with the awards and the accomplishments and the articles and the features, mm-hmm. the paid invoices. It's so great. And it was so great, mm-hmm. but it wasn't it. Yeah. You know, it for me was like mm-hmm. this place where I could feel loved and I had to love myself more mm. I had to love myself more and and that showed up with the way that I advocated for myself yeah. the things that I would tolerate in my relationships oh. the things that I would tolerate in business like the way that we teach oh, other people how part. to treat us it's a part of our own self-care having hard conversations was hard for me because I just don't like conflicts like I would rather just I'm gonna let you have it and I'll just yeah. let you have it and walk away then I realized I wasn't mm-hmm. giving the people who I love an opportunity to change. Enabling. It's like enabling yeah. them and yourself in some way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so just learning to have hard conversations and realizing when it comes to my relationships yeah. and the people who I wanted to be deeply connected to, because mm-hmm. everybody's not getting that. Like, I'm not going to sit down and have a hard conversation with everybody. Yes. Like, I just don't have it in me. Yeah. Oh but for the goodness. people who are worth it, mm-hmm. and in, in, in every relationship I assess, is this a person, is this a behavior that they're exhibiting that demonstrates they're just not perfect? Mm-hmm. Or is this relationship just not worth it? Yeah. And so when you assess it that way, you decide, okay, for you, I'll get uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I'll come outside of my comfort zone to have a hard conversation with you, even if it makes me feel mm-hmm. uncomfortable because I value our relationship. Yes. And I'd rather have a hard conversation than to lose you. Yes. But I can't give that to everybody. So, and because not everybody deserves that mm-hmm. or not everybody deserves that time or yeah. energy or intention. And, mm-hmm. and, oh my God, I just love that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and... Well, as you speak, so you didn't like and you learned how to have confrontation, hard conversation. I used to be a fighter, like in my, mm-hmm. like, oh, there is hard conversation, let's go. That but was I me. Would, I would go, oh, that was you. Oh, oh, that was me. I was like, <laughs> what do you mean? I would intimidate you. I would hit you with my words. I would win the fight. I was, 
No, I, w- I would swing on you. Oh, oh yeah. Like I got into, oh, and that's one of the things that made me change. Like I almost got kicked out of college. Oh yeah. Because I got in a fight inside of the calf at oh. family because the girl didn't get my coke right. It was so stupid, but I was such a firehead. Like I was yes. such a hothead. And I'm like, I asked for a coke and she was like, well, here's the orange juice. You said you wanted orange juice. Why? I didn't have to jump across the counter and confront her over a soda. I did not. Like now my, the healed version of me realizes this. But the 18-year-old yes. girl from Pine Hills was like, what you mean? It's disrespectful. You don't see me. You I don't didn't have any me, other programming get... at the yes. time. That was the only programming, programming that I you had. had. That was my default setting. My oh, yeah. default setting, if it was a soundtrack for my default yes. setting, it would be Nuck If You Buck. Yeah. That was my default setting. I will setting. take you out. <laughs> Let's go. Let's play. I, I can, I'm laughing because I remember... Um, I had this... My mom is Russian and I was growing up in Poland during communism. So first of all... And then they gave me a Russian name, Ludmila, where in the time where everybody hated Russian people. So oh. it was like already get resilient, you know. Right. I love my name. Um, but I remember there was such a um, programming for respect. If mm. I'm just, and my mom survived war. And now I understand wow. with my training, of course, she felt valid, like um, her space and boundaries were not respected. There was such a, you know, it's war. And she was five years old from five to, mm. to seven. And so now I understand with, you know, mm-hmm. what, what I'm, what I'm doing in my life, mm-hmm. I can understand her so much more. So if you disrespected me and it wasn't even disrespect, if I think you disrespect mm-hmm. me, you better pray for your life. And this is the thing, there's so yeah. many layers to that because oh, it's like so your mother layers. was raising you to yes. survive a war Correct. that you were never going to have to fight. Correct. And so it's like, we carry our parents' yes. trauma and they're, and they're, they're doing mm-hmm. their best. They're just teaching oh, us yes. how to survive in the world. Correct. My daughter told me that she was like, mm-hmm. mom, this is when yes. she turned 12, yes. started her period. And it was like, it was, <laughs> it was, it was real, real Rough. punk in our <laughs> home. And so we had a conversation, a heated mm-hmm. conversation. Mm. And she goes, mom, you're trying to raise me for a world that doesn't exist anymore. And I'm like, go to your room. Uh-huh. And we'll talk about this later. Because I need to process this because you are right, but I maybe need to right. sit with it. <laughs> and my husband and I, we looked at each other. I'm like, did she just win mm-hmm. the argument? And I'm like, we ain't going to tell her that. <laughs> we ain't going to tell her that. Daughter, don't listen to this episode. <laughs> <laughs> but she was right. Mm-hmm. A lot of the things that I was raising her to be resilient against yeah. were battles that she would never have to face. She's never going to know what it's like to be hungry or to live in a home without lights or to grow up in an environment where she has to fight to get to her bus stop because yeah. I had shifted that reality for her Correct. because of my mm-hmm. decisions. My mm-hmm. children don't have to grow up in the same yes. environment. And so I'm raising her so as if from- she's mm-hmm. in my position and she's not. And it's mm-hmm. just like having that awareness when we, when we start to break chains, it's also realizing that now our kids need new tools to fight different yes. battles. There, yes. It's a different battle. It's a, they, their reality is not our reality mm-hmm. as how we were growing up and, mm-hmm. Whatever we had in in fears, it's not their fears mm-hmm. anymore because mm-hmm. they're also separate from us and different. Mm-hmm. And we are different people than our parents. Mm-hmm. And so I, how oh my goodness, so, so much juice. But yes, I, my mom was raising me to be tough. My mom mm-hmm. was like, don't let anybody walk over you. Don't let anybody. Mm-hmm. And I'm thankful for that because it made me very strong, but also from this place of, you know, conditioning. And if I felt that I was disrespected, I remember we were, um, I, I grabbed somebody when I was 15. It was middle school. And <laughs> I cannot this person, even imagine. Yeah, oh, listen, <laughs> we, were, we were changing before PE and this girl said something about my mother. And it's a family. You don't disrespect yeah, your family. I feel you on that. And now I know it was fight flight. <laughs> and she said something about Russian, something about mom. And I just remember grabbing her like this against the wall. And like everybody in the locker room was like... <gasps> <laughs> I was like, you do not, uh, you know, and I, I gave it to her, right? And then we end up in a principal's office and there we go again. And, you know, I'm being reprimanded. You do not mm. put hands on someone. And I look at the principal and I say, sir, please educate this person not to be disrespectful of my family. <laughs> and then I don't have to put hands on her. This is so simple. See, so that's why I'm not employable in corporate. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm a different person now, well, so my God husband can, uh, you know, um, confirm that. But that was me. <laughs> that was me also in a workplace at some point when I see injustice and your words don't match your action. I will call you out. I mean, mm-hmm. can you imagine how was I, how I was an employee? I had a lot of skills, but mm-hmm. that fight that like this is wrong, this is right. Mm-hmm. 
that was there. And so now I, I think that energy is still there, but it's like yeah. you, you learn how to channel it. Oh, it's yeah. like being a kid and yes. with a with a weapon. It's like mm-hmm. this is can this can protect me or yes. this can harm Hurt. others. Yes. So how do I manage the tools that I have? How do I still protect myself, but in a way that's so much more wise and mature mm-hmm. and it doesn't cause involve harm to me? Others. Yes, jump mm-hmm. over the counters jump and grab counter. people. <laughs> you know, like let's be honest. And right. I will say, uh, uh, I was. It was in December. I was at the playground with my younger son, and mm. there was a person that behaved really poorly towards me. She was very disrespect, very disrespectful, and she started. She heard my accent, and she started saying very horrible things to me. And I looked at her and I, you know, I felt this, you know, I was activated (laughs) and I felt that. And I was like, this is not worth it. I grabbed my son and I left and I looked back, like I came home and I really had to regulate myself because this was so disrespectful. And I just looked at this woman and I said, I can see you are a racist and it's okay, but I'm not having any conversation with you. This is not worth my time. And I left and I thought of my son, like he's standing next to me. And for a minute, I felt like, do I need to engage with this? I'm mm-hmm. like, this person will not even understand what I'm saying. This person is not on the level to even receive what I can give her. So I'm just going to leave. But I came home and I was shaking and I told my husband, I'm like, okay, I just need to regulate because this activated the, the you know, the disrespect. This activated so many things in me. Mm-hmm. And so I just need to sit with myself and process this because... There was anger, there was shame, there was like, why did I leave? Also a part like, you didn't say anything. And I just needed 15 minutes to half an hour. I dealt, I processed, and then I looked at myself and I said, well, I'm proud of you. Mm -hmm. Because 10 years ago, I think you would punch her. So Mm -hmm. you see your own evolution and it's not that you don't become activated, that your nervous system doesn't get triggered. You do, but because you do so much work that you are able to notice and witness that. Like I had to take a breath and just kind of create that space and like, is this really what I want to be doing right now? Mm -hmm. No, this Mm -hmm. is not me in this space anymore in front of my children. So um, I can relate to so many things that you are sharing because it really is the question of do I will require, will I require of myself to raise my standard for myself or not? Mm. Will you raise the standard? Yeah, for myself. That's how good. I respond mm-hmm. or do I react? Mm-hmm. And if I do, then mm-hmm. what do I do further with that? That's that's really good. And that that's really a testament to your growth. Um, for me, I went from jumping across counters yeah. to not saying anything. Yeah. Like I had a hard time, especially yeah. in business and in corporate, with finding that balance. Because I knew how to mm-hmm. operate, you know, if I had to jump across the yes. counter. I knew how to, I knew how to do that <laughs> and do it very I'm good well. good at this. And to do Fact. that. <laughs> but I didn't, and then, and I also learned mm-hmm. because I didn't want to show up that way because yeah. I understood how detrimental it was. Yes, that I stopped responding at all. So you went and to that the was other dangerous spectrum. as well. Mm. Yeah, because I would just take it and I would just walk wow. away. Wow, yeah. and I would just look at people like you have no idea. I'm going to walk away <laughs> for both of us. Yes, but yes. that wasn't healthy either because yeah. now I'm going home with these emotions. Mm-hmm. Like you had to go home and regulate. Yeah, I'm like why am I bringing? this yes. to my p- place of peace my home is my yeah. place of peace and so like yeah. i had to figure out how do i find a way to face conflict yes. but still show up in the face of that conflict mm-hmm. as the higher version of myself and it really yeah. took some practice until i realized i was getting better i wouldn't say i have arrived because it's if you trigger me the right yes, way i don't yeah. know uh-huh i don't know <laughs> but <laughs> okay then, don't trigger her please be nice <laughs> be nice she's so lovely <laughs> and i am and i and i carry yes. grace and i treat mm-hmm. people with grace but just because you're in a in a healthy emotional yes. state doesn't mean that you know, the people around you are going to be mm-hmm. and so what i noticed made a difference in the moment yeah. i'm like how do i show up in the moment yeah because like i can't jump across the counter yeah and just not saying anything is not healthy for me yes. because now i'm carrying all this inner burden yeah. burden like mm-hmm. i should have said something yeah so how do I show up in the moment? Like, how do I find this healthy medium? And it took me a long time to find that, especially in business. And so what I what I started to do is I start to say, how do I address this situation and take the emotions out of it? Yes. Because this person doesn't know me well enough to have an issue with me. No. Their issue is mm-hmm. this is how they show up in the world. Yes. So how do I meet them where they are? Mm-hmm. And, and, and you'll be surprised how much you can disarm someone when 100%. you honestly, genuinely, and empathetically mm-hmm. say, are you okay? Yeah. I was in Starbucks and this lady, she you just maybe she had a bad day. Yeah. 
who knows? Yeah. You know, she just seemed, yeah. she just wasn't in a good space. And she was just being rude and nasty for no reason. And I was happy to feel good that day. Like, I was vibing. I like You know, this. looking good, feeling good, you know, <laughs> just made some money. Yes, yeah. I'm having, I'm feeling good. And she just looked at me. And she was just being rude for no reason. Yeah. And I could have just snapped and went off like, yeah. what is your problem? I said, ma'am, are you okay? Yeah. And she was so disarmed because she was expecting, expecting. me to match her energy. Yes. But why, why do I have to come all the way down here, babe? I'd rather bring you up. Yes. I'd rather bring you up. Mm-hmm. And she felt so embarrassed. I'm like, it's okay. It's honestly okay. We've all been there. Mm-hmm. I'm like, do better. But do better. But do you better. see what I mean? Do so better. again, you have empathy. And I love that. So it's like, there is some compassion mm-hmm. and there is also accountability. Do better. Yes, do that better. part. Because so without, we can have no. empathy without accountability yes. empowers a broken no, person. It's enabling. Mm-hmm. It's enabling. I feel sorry for you and I feel sorry, but I don't demand more of you. Ooh, that's, good. that's like, you know, it's like placing that demand. Yes. And I can understand your pain. I can understand yes. your brokenness, but there's a demand, a level of accountability. By ex- I expect you. I expect to you. try to because do I also see that you can do better. Mm. So it's also like I demand that of you because I see that you are not this. You are more and than this. I demand mm-hmm. that of you because in order yes. for you to be a part of my yes. world and my inner ecosystem, yes. this is what's required to Correct. engage here. Correct. I had a client um, and she needed more than only my help. And at some mm. point I told her that and I said, I want you to see also this person Mm -hmm. because you need more. You need deeper and more and all the things. So Mm -hmm. um, I didn't hear from her for some time. And I said, please do that first and then come back to me. Right. And then after a while, she reaches out to me and she starts asking me all these questions. And I just ask, have you seen this person? Mm -hmm. And she says, no. And so I replied, with all the love, I will not be answering any questions until you see this person. Mm -hmm. And she told me later, she said, Miwa, the way you set the boundary and how clear you were, but you were very loving with me. Mm -hmm. You were not reactive. You were just like, this is what I told you to do. This is what Mm -hmm. will help you. And then you come. Do not come back before you do that. Do not request of my time to try to help you when you are not helping yourself. And so she said, when you did that for me, she said, it was first, it was like a slap in the face. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest, because we are not used to people setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. And then she said, but after I got over myself, I started asking, how am I not setting boundaries with people in my life? How do I allow all of the stuff, all of the behaviors? How do I allow that? And she said, thank you so much for showing Mm me how being um, authentic, but not only how having a standard with yourself and being comfortable with setting it and communicating Mm -hmm. that in a very compassionate but very clear way Mm -hmm. she said i started looking around and i started doing it with people in my life and myself and she says this is so freeing Mm -hmm. and i realized wow by us taking responsibility for ourselves and us having boundaries us having standards we show other people that you can do the same Mm -hmm. and your life will improve Mm -hmm. wow so valuable that's so good and i and accountability does feel like an attack for people who are not ready to Yes. own their own emotions yes. you know yeah but setting those boundaries is, a, is an act of self-love it like is. i can love you mm-hmm. and still not tolerate your behavior correct and i think showing people that empathy and that compassion mm-hmm. says you're still lovable but your behavior is intolerable it's intolerable so mm-hmm. it, it, it separates the person from the way they're showing up and it, it makes them accountable i still love you you're still loving yeah. you still deserve love but it's your behavior you're still worthy you're still worthy yes but the behavior so it's like I love you, it needs a no. Yeah. I love you, it needs a no. Yeah. And sometimes we think that love always sounds like yes, but love mm. sounds like no as well. That's a whole book title, <laughs> Love Sounds Like No. That's mm-hmm. a whole book title. There we go. That's a book, <laughs> Love Sounds Like No, with setting, what does mm-hmm. that look like on a self-love level? Yeah. Or setting boundaries for mm-hmm. people who are overcoming trauma. Yes. Love sounds like, like no. no. I like that. <laughs> By the way, if you can come back to the subject, because I don't know if everybody knows, what do you do in that space, in publishing? And oh. she's amazing. <laughs> so I'm the proud CEO of Live Limitless Media Group. My, mm-hmm. co- uh, my company is a full service book and brand incubator. We help highly successful CEOs and, and celebrities to turn personal stories into business and brand assets through strategic partnerships, mm-hmm. books mm-hmm. and influential brands. 
Fabulous. <laughs> Such a gift with words. And you also mentioned before we started the podcast that what you can help people with is take the content from podcast mm -hmm. and turn it into a book. Could you just explain a little bit more? Yeah, so I think I figure once you've done the work to, because building a podcast, mm -hmm. whether it be yes. establishing your brand through launching a book or a podcast, mm -hmm. it's still establishing what's your energy signature. Yes. What's that mesh that you want to put out into the mm -hmm. world? A book or a podcast, it yes. truly just embodies that. Yes. So if you've done a podcast, it's really just about repurposing your content mm -hmm. because it's the same message. It's your core values. It's how you want to show up in the world. And the book or the, the podcast just becomes that package. Yeah. And so when you transfer the medium from either audio to print form, yes. it's just repurposing your content. Mm -hmm. The goal is just to get your message out into the masses. Mm -hmm. And you have people that read books. You have people that listen to podcasts. Mm -hmm. You have people that show up at events, and so it may be necessary mm -hmm. to go on stages. Mm -hmm. It's really about being very, very clear about what your purpose is, mm -hmm. what your message is, mm -hmm. who are the people you've been called to serve, how do you serve them, mm -hmm. what tools do you give them, yes. and then how do you reach them through what medium? Is that through books, mm -hmm. podcasts, speaking, traveling? How do you yes. reach those people? So if you want to write a book, if you want to take the content from, let's say, podcast to a book, mm -hmm. you are the person. Guys can she's call an, me. Yeah, she's an amazing person for that. <laughs> so we could sit here for hours. Okay. <laughs> so I'm enjoying this so much. Um, this is fun. This is fun. I know. This is so much fun. So how, and, and I'm so glad that you mentioned also saying no and navigating conflict in business. Mm -hmm. Because I think when it comes also relationships, mm -hmm. relationship with people in business, relationship to our business. And for so many of us, like for me, um, learning how we value ourselves in business mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how we get paid for the value we provide for other people of ours. So it's not you don't pay me for my value, you pay for the value that I provide with my skills yeah. for you and your life or your business. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we can be scared of this confrontation or afraid because if we will have this hard conversation, I think for a lot of business owners, we can be fearful that our clients will leave or we mm -hmm. will not be compensated. And can you speak to that? Because I find it is so important to still do that and yeah. still hold the boundaries and have the standard. Otherwise, our self-confidence and self-image yeah. becomes so yeah. mm, downhill. <laughs> what do you, like? How it do you see happen. that? Mm -hmm. So I'd say the hardest conversation, mm -hmm. some of the most hardest, mm -hmm. some of the hardest mm -hmm. conversations I've had to have are the conversations with myself. Yeah. Before I assess how someone else is treating mm -hmm. or handling me, I ask myself, what am I doing to contribute to this yes. behavior? Mm -hmm. What am I doing or saying or how am I showing up in a way that allows this or makes this tolerable, yes. especially if it becomes a pattern? Mm -hmm. And so for me personally, I realized that I was attracting people who didn't necessarily value what I was bringing to the table because I had grossly discounted and grossly undervalued myself. So it's like you can't be a diamond mm -hmm. on a stand and position yourself with rhinestones mm -hmm. and expect people to, at face value, recognize the difference. Yes. You may shine a little different, but mm -hmm. the value that's assessed is going to mm -hmm. be based on how you position yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you're on the 999 stand, mm -hmm. even if you're worth a million bucks, it's yeah. the way you position yourself. And you'll always be frustrated and you'll always be undervalued mm -hmm. because you haven't properly positioned yourself. And I realized that I had done that so many times mm -hmm. in my business, whether it was grossly undervaluing my rates because yes. I was thinking about the people I'm serving. Yes. What's, a, what's a great price point? I can relate. What's what can great, they pay? What, can what they would pay? be reasonable for them? And that's not my business. And Correct. It's not about what they can pay. It's about, yes. number one, who does this package serve? Mm -hmm. Who is this going to benefit? And you'll know when you have the right clients when your clients start to get yes. the results. Yes. Because you can have a great package. You can have a great program. Mm -hmm. But when it stops at you, yeah. when the greatness stops at you or, or the work mm -hmm. stops at you, you realize mm -hmm. that the communication from you to your client yes. is not being properly achieved mm -hmm. because they should be able to take that ball and run with it and yes. take it to that next level. And so yes. I had to stop and assess myself, like, why do you place such small value on things, mm -hmm. um, on what you do? Mm -hmm. And it's because it came so natural to me. Yeah. You know, I can I can sit with you for 30 minutes, have a conversation, listen mm -hmm. intently and empathetically mm -hmm. and spit out 
a full yeah. 10 chapters for you. It's so easy. You think you shouldn't be charging more. Exactly. Yeah, I relate. So it's mm -hmm. not about how long it took me to do it or mm -hmm. how easy it came to me. It's about the value yes. that you would place on that. Yes. And it's hard for someone to place value on something, but they don't understand how to use it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yes, I have this book, but there's a difference between someone who has a book and someone that has a book and they turn their book into a business. Yes. They're speaking in unconscious. They're getting... Mm -hmm corporate contracts yes. you know they're they're bargaining and they're doing all these great things with their book and someone else their book is just sitting on the shelf the Very same different. tool mm -hmm. but it's not being used the same because there is lack of belief lack in of yourself belief. Yeah. In what what you what the gift is what you present mm -hmm. what you can really help people with and so again it comes back always to us yeah. always before anything else it comes back always to us and i can relate to so many things because when i started my business i was also oh no, I cannot say that. How can I charge that? Oh my goodness. Like yeah. this is so much. And then as you, I realized my client's wallet is none of my business. At my all. client's wallet is none of my business. This is not where I need to spend any time mm -hmm. about, you know, like this is not my business is how do I provide better service? How yes. can I help my clients transform? Yes. How can I keep growing myself year yes. in? What's the next training that would be, not only beneficial to my clients, but help me in my further transformation. Yes. Those are the questions. Those are the, if I don't understand how to market or how to sell, how can I be better at this instead of mm. how much money this person makes? That's can it. they pay me? That's a horrible, that's such a low vibration. And yes. it's again, taking away and leaving yourself and going to somebody else to figure out what you can charge. Mm. Such a bad way to do it. That's, right? Drop the mic. <laughs> Drop the mic. Drop the mic. Drop the mic. <laughs> Listen, so I'm becoming a better speaker <laughs> in you, some ways. You're killing it. So I I was really, I mentioned off camera, but I want to say like last night I was talking to my husband and I said, you know, a year ago when I would listen to my podcasts or listen to people like I admire both you and just our podcast producer <laughs> for how, how you have this gift with words. And mm. for me, it just takes more time and more intentionality and really pasting myself and mm -hmm. being less rushed and also working on my vocabulary. And, and, and I said to my husband, you know, it's, I still have growth to do and, and I'm open for this and I'm very intrigued, but I'm so much better than last year. Yes. Like I can see my own progression in, in that space mm -hmm. and with the skill and I still have things to improve on but I look back and I'm like wow this is how it works we start here mm -hmm. and then we don't know how it's going to look like mm -hmm. in relationship in business in mm -hmm. any kind of skill or talent mm -hmm. that we are trying to progress with and as we go as we go we can look back three months six months and then you look at yeah. the whole year and you say wow it was only a year and that's where I am mm. it's such a you know just taking a pride in yeah. our own growth mm -hmm. when day to day might not seem like something is happening yeah. but it is happening as long as you stay with it it is happening mm -hmm. it is happening so i was i was telling my husband like i saw you and i was so inspired and here we are you know i met jessica when was that two years ago not even i think yeah maybe it was and and now we are here and you i think it was 18 months and mm -hmm. i say wow this is what seems like not much is happening, not much is happening. And then it's like, here a we are. A whole lot is happening. A lot is happening. A whole lot has happened. With small, yes. Have you heard the story of the bamboo tree? No. So. But she'll tell me. <laughs> Listen to this, guys. So the bamboo tree, like once you plant the seed, the bamboo tree grows five years underground. Mm. So if you're only looking at the growth from surface value yeah. and it hasn't sprouted the ground yet, you'll think it's been five years and this tree has not grown at mm. all. But on the fifth year, it sprouts up like 80 feet yeah. on the fifth year. It, it had been growing all along. Mm -hmm. It just was getting roots first. Yeah. The things that stand the tallest are the things that are deep rooted or mm. deeply connected or things that are established on a firm foundation. Yeah. The firmer the foundation, the higher you can go up. Yes. So a lot of times growth is not mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. projected. Yes. It, sometimes it's inward first. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's that that. It's grounding first. Yes. And then that fifth year, because timing is everything, mm -hmm. it may look like you only grew 80 feet in, yeah. you know, that one year mm -hmm. when you've been growing all along. Mm -hmm. So be be mindful of that. You're 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 much you're deeper rooted yeah. than you think. 
Yeah. There's no, so much I, more than you can even imagine. Mm-hmm. There's so much more to go. You have no idea. And all you got to do is keep showing up, yeah. keep believing, keep growing, and continue to give yourself grace. You don't always have to be perfect, and you don't have yeah. to be like anybody else. Yes. You can do it in your way. In your spicy Russian <laughs> sauce, you can do it your way. <coughs> and if some days that's strong, then that's yeah, just what it is. Strong. And if some days it's soft, then that's, soft. That's, that's what they get. But in every day, you get to be you. Thank you. And this ties <laughs> to when I said that I want to, when you say be who you are, and if some days is your str- strong, powerful, like firecracker, that's it. And some mm-hmm. days if it's more soft and peaceful and i mean firecracker can be so peaceful Mm -hmm. it's just the energy is different and it ties back to this conversation about when Mm -hmm. i saw you and i said wow this energy this the way you carry yourself and how can i really be mindful intentional Mm -hmm. about my own energy when Mm -hmm. i show up for Mm -hmm. myself and when i'm around people and being intentional that as you say don't be like anybody else i don't have to have the same energy like you Mm -hmm. i don't have to present in the same way as you and and you just said that if one day you feel soft mm-hmm. and just mellow, that's what it is. And if some days you are powerful in your fire, mm-hmm. you can be powerful in softness and you can be mm-hmm. powerful in this fire. Mm-hmm. That's what you do. And there is no right or wrong. And it's just you. It's just me. So it's this really being intentional, mindful of this is inspirational. And how does that transfer to me in my own way? I love it. Yeah. I love it. And I mean, and, and it's okay if you operate in a duality. Yes. Because I can be soft and calm and peaceful, but if I'm on stage and I'm passionate, yes. you're going to get that version of yeah. me too, you know? And, it, and it's all me. And it's really learning to love and embrace and accept all. All parts. All of my parts. All of your parts. All the parts. Our beautiful parts. <laughs> and the parts that are also. The spicy parts. <laughs> the spicy parts. Those parts too. Oh my goodness. It was such a pleasure to have you here. And I appreciate you taking the time. I have enjoyed. It, this is fun. This is fun. This is we fun. can go all day. I know. Like this is just next a great time is gonna be a whole day podcast <laughs> <laughs> episode. Um, I want you to know that I really value you taking time out of your life because I know you love your family, you love your work, mm-hmm. and you are very intentional. So I appreciate you coming here and spending time with me. I have enjoyed every minute of it. Thank you. So. Anything else before we go? I would say for all those watching Mm -hmm. to tap in to yourself so that you too can be deeply connected to who you are at your core so you can show up and connect with those you've been called to serve because there's something so special about who you are. There's something so powerful about what you carry. And in order to truly maneuver your gift, you're going to have to become deeply connected with your identity. And so I hope that you guys have gathered some of that from today's podcast mm-hmm. so that you too can transition from surviving to thriving so you can find your sweet spot. Mm, beautiful. <laughs> Stay tuned. And remember, may we stay deeply connected to ourselves and those around us. <laughs>